Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mensch. The other day I did an install on my real bare metal computer through SSH. So now I'm going to SSH into that computer and install the GNOME desktop environment. So let's get to it. I'm going to open up a terminal and I am going to SSH into mench at and let's see if I can get in. Oh, it's asking for my password. And now I'm in. I'm connected to my other bare metal computer or one of my other bare metal computers, the one I made my last video on, where I did the install through SSH. And let's do a NeoFetch. Well, let's do an HTOP. So that computer is running Arch Linux with the i3 window manager. And of course, this is a real bare metal computer I've SSH'd into. It's not a virtual machine. It has four processors. I didn't give it any swap because I never do. And it's running at 280 megabytes of RAM. And it's been up for a day and 26 minutes. Now, you know what? Let's do a NeoFetch. And there it is there. So let's update the system. Let's do sudo pacman. S Y U. Put my password in. And there's a few things to update. So let's update it. And it's done. Let's clear the screen. And now I'm going to install the GNOME desktop environment. So let's type in sudo pacman s gnome. Wow, look at all this stuff. <laughs> I'm just going to hit all. Oof. Installing 193 packages. Oh, but look how fast it's going. Wow. I have a good mirror. Okay, so finished installing GNOME. And I'm going to clear the screen. And I'm going to remove these packages sudo pacman r gnome console gnome software and epiphany okay and um reason why is that the gnome desktop runs really high in ram and GNOME software makes it run high, and I don't know why anyone would use the GNOME Software Center. Now, I've never used it, really, but I know it causes the RAM to run high, and I've had a few people mention to me in the comments of my other videos that the GNOME Software Center is no good. It doesn't have good stuff in it. It doesn't work properly, and I really don't know. I can't say if that's true. That's just what people have told me. I never used it myself, and I really don't see the point of using GNOME software because this is Arch Linux. So whatever I want to install, I'm going to go to the Arch Linux website, see if it's available in the official Arch Linux repository, and I'm going to install it in the terminal. And if it's not available there, then I'm going to go into the AUR, the Arch user repository, and most likely it's going to be there, and I'm going to install it. I have, I don't know what this GNOME software is about, but it uses a lot of RAM. And I'm going to delete Epiphany because Epiphany is a website browser. It's a browser and it's no good. And I use Firefox anyways. And I'm going to remove GNOME console because I use Xterm. So I'm going to hit enter and it's removing those. Yes. And that's done. So because I'm in here through SSH, I can't uh, log into the GNOME desktop environment. Let's clear the screen because I need to change a setting in here so I can log in with the remote desktop environment. I need to open some ports in my firewall. I'm going to do sudo uncomplicated firewall limit 3389. I'm going to put my password in and now let's clear the screen and let's do sudo uncomplicated firewall status verbose 
So now I've opened the ports. So the ports for SSH were already opened in my firewall. Now I've opened the ports for remote desktop environment. So now I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to go set up. I'm going to log into GNOME in my other computer and set it up for remote desktop. And then I'm going to log into it from this computer and show you how to do it and show you what it's about. So don't go away because I'm going to be back. Um, before I do that, I need to exit. Hey, I'm back. So I set everything up and I'm going to use Ramina. I'm going to do uh, mod key R to open up Ramina. And it's my Acer 2. So I'm going to log into it. And there we are. We're logged into the other computer. And of course, this is a real bare metal computer. It's not a virtual machine. And I don't know why it's, let's change the, I don't know why it's setting my, affecting my camera. Let's change the background. Maybe it's this blue color. And of course, these are wallpapers that come with GNOME. Let's try this dark wallpaper. Let's close it. Oh, that's a bit better. I don't know why the wallpaper would be affecting my camera. So this is GNOME. And I'm not going to do a major thing on GNOME here. I'm just going to show you how to set up remote desktop. We're going to go into settings. And I'm going to make this full screen. This is one of the things I really like about GNOME. Is that, and actually, I have one of my real computers is running GNOME. Out in the living room. Well, it's because it's the computer my wife uses. And she's not going to use a window manager. But... Sometimes I use that computer too, but it's basically her computer. But we also use that computer to watch TV shows and stuff like that, right? But anyways, I'm getting off track. <laughs> so, but one of the beautiful things about GNOME is it just works. And it makes remote desktop really easy to do. So I'm going to go down to system. I'm going to click on system. And we're going to click on. Remote desktop. You have to toggle these two buttons on because by default they're going to be off. And then you have to put your password in. And you can eye it. Or you have to put your username in and your password. And of course, for now, just for the sake of the video, I use password as password. So of course you're smart enough, you're not going to use password as your password, right? And then you close it and let's disconnect. And in Ramina, if you're using Ramina, and if you use my post install script, you're going to have Ramina installed. Let's delete this connection. I'm going to delete it. Let's delete it. Now I'm going to add a connection. So in the guest machine, if you're using Ramina, and like I said, you're going to have it installed if you use my post install script from my GitLab repository, then you're going to hit plus, right? You're going to go to here, you're going to click on RDP, and I'm going to give it a label. Let's call it Acer-2. And I'm going to click on on here, and I'm going to type in, oh, why is this not working? Is my mouse going funny here? My IP address, my username is Mitch, and my password is password. Let's see if it worked, if I typed it right. There you go, I typed it right. And let's save and connect. Let's make it full screen, and there we are. We're connected to my other computer that's running the GNOME desktop environment. And... Easy, if I want to disconnect, I can do anything in here. And let's go to uh, Xterm. Let's make it full screen. And let's do an HTOP. And now we're running at 929 megabytes of RAM. Not bad. And if you don't want to log in with Ramina, you could log in with... Oh, let's get out of here. <laughs> if you don't want to log in with Ramina, you could log in with... GNOME connections. And you just hit the plus sign. 
and type in your IP. Hit connect. Put your username in. Put your password in. And you can even eye it because I made password my password just for the sake of the video. And then we're in. And if you want to uh, make it full screen, you can make it full screen. And GNOME Connections comes with the GNOME desktop environment. You don't have to download it. Or if you have another computer that has a window manager or some other desktop environment, you can download GNOME Connections into that computer by itself, or you can use Romina. And when you're logged in with GNOME Connections, to get out of there, you just hit this little square up here, and then hit the power button. And it takes you out of GNOME Connections. And now we're back at the main computer. And that's it. In this video, I showed you how to install the GNOME desktop environment. I showed you how to delete a few of the apps that come with it to make it run a little, little bit lighter. And I showed you how to remote into it and how to set it up for a remote desktop environment. And I showed you two ways how to remote into it using the Remina app or GNOME Connections. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I am the Linux Mensch.